you run into Farmer A a lot. And Farmer A, or I shouldn't say Farmer A. Well, I've never had a farmer in a game. <laughs> I should say Soldier A. But oh, we no, know she just leaked that game. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. The soldier <laughs> used to be a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> any because farming before game. he was a it's soldier, a he was a farmer. farmer. It's it could a be a zombie, zombie farmer. farmer. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Our guest is amazing. She is a voice director and casting director of epic titles like Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, Halo 5, and so many more. We love her. We're getting buzzed. She's incredible with Amanda Wyatt. Woohoo! Welcome! Thanks, yes. guys. Thanks for being here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for asking me. What a yes. treat. Thank, Thank you. you. Nobody gets Amanda Wyatt. Right. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> Highly sought They normally have to pay Amanda the big bucks to get her to come into a room. Oh, no, We're giving her true. a purple mug. Thank you. Listen, we know. <laughs> thank you for having we me. We know how extremely busy you yes. are. So thank you for carving yes. out a little time for us. We really appreciate Not that. Not a problem. It's yes. my pleasure. Thank I'm excited you. to finally be here. Good. Yeah. yeah. I think we should get right into it because we have so many cool questions for you. I know. Yeah. Um, um, when you're working with voice actors. What are some of the obstacles that you feel they have to overcome when they're creating characters? Hmm, um, it's a good question. I would say that the number one obstacle is that I find is really being aware of your surroundings and creating that space for yourself. Mm -hmm. As you guys know, right, you're in a taupe, sometimes gray room yep. um, with a glass wall. And yeah. so when, um, let's just say you're of a theatrical background or you've- I like how you doing... actually mentioned the colors of the room. Right, well, it's always taupe or gray. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes a dusty blue. Um, I wonder if a lot of people notice really that. Really, vintage, vintage, vintage rooms come yeah. in a dusty blue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the more current or gray. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's really this this, space and it's just you and you've probably been given very little on your character, mm -hmm. even a, you know, a smaller amount on the actual game. Yeah. So if um, that context isn't afforded to you, I always stress that it's, you know, you need to make choices, you need to make strong choices and you need to make it up. You need to figure out, um, you know, what are my surroundings? What's going to get you to that performance level? What's mm -hmm. going to raise the stakes or lower the stakes for yourself? Um, you've got to imagine the space. You've got to imagine that actor um, that's playing opposite than you because yep. that's never in the booth in a video game. Yep. Right. Um, so I would say that's one of the biggest obstacles and hurdles that people have to overcome. I mean, and, and that goes for you know, highly skilled actors that I've worked yep. with that come off off screen or off off the stage, um, where they are used to that submersive environment, mm -hmm. and then suddenly it's almost <laughs> like you've been stripped out and you're yeah. naked yeah. in there. Like, and where'd you're going, everybody what go? What do I do? Where yeah. are my clothes? Well, guess what? You, if that's not provided to you, you need to provide that to yourself, yeah. right? right. Um, to get you to where you. So need even to be. in a, like in an audition situation where you sometimes get. Minimal, minimal. Absolutely not. Or you get so much specs, that, but it still isn't everything that you really need. Right, right. You don't know if you're making the right choice. Right. But, but at least you're making a, a choice. choice. Yeah. Yep, make a and choice. And stick to it. Yeah. When I listen to hundreds and hundreds of auditions come in. And you uh, actually hundreds. listen to hundreds yeah. and hundreds. I actually. You're not listen like listening to every <laughs> other. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I really don't. I really, really don't. Um, I feel like if. You know, the voice, voice actors have put in the time and effort to send them in, then I need to do diligence and listen to them. Right. Um, and sometimes, honestly, they might not be right for that role, but wow, I've flagged them for another role that's coming up or, you know, uh, another role in that same game or another role in a different game. So I do listen to them. I may not listen to all I was gonna ask, minutes yeah. of them, yeah. but my point is I can tell um, right off the bat I was going to ask you how long. And who's who how has long it? do you listen before you go? Because I mean, your ears probably about so thirty seconds mm -hmm. in, and then I'll know. Okay, well, first of all, you kind of... pretty much know what you're looking for. I do, right? Mm -hmm. So I knowing do. that going in, you're pretty much no. This is like completely off mark. Has there ever been 
something that you've heard that wasn't on Mark, but it was so intriguing that you remembered it for something else, or you even brought that person in just to read them for something else, maybe. I'm sure. I'm sure there has been. I can't like pinpoint. When did that happen? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> we want we dates like, and times. <laughs> I don't know. Amanda. Um, this is, but this I, is becoming I'm, an interrogation. I'm sure that's happened. Right. I mean, it probably happens on every every project. That's where, cool. You know, I say, oh, she's not right for that role, but that was an interesting read for this role over mm -hmm. here. Um, so yeah, hence the reason why I do try and listen to yeah because you're you're actually yeah. you know getting some ideas for maybe other things that may be coming exactly up. exactly and just yeah. for people that don't know I mean to give some perspective I mean if you're getting hundreds of submissions for one role and there's potentially hundreds of roles in the game mm -hmm. that's a lot of math oh yeah. Yeah, it's a ton. It's a ton. So what people often don't know is, you know, they'll build out um, the casting based on the uh, lead actors and the primary actors mm -hmm. um, or, or roles rather in the game. And then they're what we call NPC characters. So those are like non-player characters, little ancillary roles right. that we're also having to cast. Um, a lot of those don't go to audition. A lot of those are um, kind of hand selected by the casting director or the director. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe we'll, people we'll, people we'll, that you know in the past that can come in are just going to freaking nail it without like a lot of exactly. Work. Yeah. And or we pull from the short list of those lead roles. So oh, let's say I'm casting ten lead roles, you know, and I always pass through seven to ten names to my clients. Well. One of those guys and gals are going to book those, but um, you know, let's not reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. These have been these actors have been you know um, vetted, if you will, to be good enough for the game. Yeah. So, what other role can we assign them? You mm -hmm. know, um, so that's why it's 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 not a. Um, I mean, it is a tedious effort yeah, to listen yeah. to all yeah. of it. No, it is, but it's yeah, part it's of the not process. For nothing, but it it's a multi-fold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, in be fact, payoff. it's like a casting pyramid scheme. Yeah, it trickles yeah. down. <laughs> and and <laughs> th down. this groundwork, this foundation work that you're doing is what ultimately makes this final product yeah. incredible. Right. Right. So it's that important. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of times the lead actors in a video game. Um, the ones that are featured more in the cinematics and in the actual story mode or in the in the actual um, storyline have way fewer lines than the NPC characters, yes. mm -hmm. right? Um, the supporting characters will come in and do battle chatter lines for weeks on end. Yeah. Um, whereas that, you know, one lead role maybe had a couple of sessions yeah. and that was it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think it's... Is there a reason for that, or, or is there a reason for for the lead role not having as many uh, lines as the uh, MPs? Um, not not really. I would just say that they're basically what happens is their their dialogue is kind of few and far between because they're crucial parts of the story, right? Um, but you run into Farmer A a lot. And Farmer A, or I shouldn't say Farmer A. Well, I've never had a farmer in a game. <laughs> I should say Soldier A. But oh, we no, know she what just leaks that game. Oh. Far, hold on, a soldier <laughs> that used to be a farmer. Not doing any because farming Because before he was a soldier, a he was a farmer. farmer. It's it could be a zombie, zombie farmer. farmer. <laughs> yeah, you'll run into, geez, Zombie Farmer A um, <laughs> quite a bit. And yeah, Zombie yeah. Farmer A has got to tell you where to go yeah. and what the next objective is. And so there's a lot more filler dialogue yeah, than there exactly. is story dialogue. Exactly. So yeah. I always say to actors, like, when you don't book the lead role, um, yes, sure, everybody wants that needy, right. you know, cinematic material that comes with the lead role. However, um, the moolah can be over on the other end of things. Exactly. Wow. Zombie oh. farmer with the zombie farmer. You know? Hello. Yeah, so. Amanda, it sounds like you really love what you do. I do. I love it. How did you get into voice casting and directing? I mean, what led you to that? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'll try and keep it brief. But yeah. I we want the abridged version. You got about five minutes. <laughs> okay, great. <Nice. laughs> I'll try to keep it brief. So I started back in aging myself like late 
90s at a uh, sound studio called Sound Deluxe. The 90s when you were about 16. Mm -hmm. I was not She was a prodigy. Yes. Um, No. I uh, started there as a um, kind of coordinator for sound design um, and uh, sound designers and composers. Uh They were basically, you know, putting sound design and music into video games. And um, lo and behold, some of the developers that are currently still around um, started calling Sound Deluxe because they were this big name audio house, mm-hmm. um, wondering whether or not you know we had any access to Hollywood talent. Um, and so, uh, because back in the day, a lot of people don't know, but a lot of um, back in the day, people from the dev teams used to provide voices for mm-hmm. video games. Um, so the developers themselves, developers themselves, yeah. sorry, yeah. Um, would provide those voices. And they just wanted to up their game, right? So it started there. I was a coordinator, and then I started doing producing um, for voiceover for video games. And uh, then dipped my toe into a little bit of casting and was fortunate enough to um, be able to start hiring. Re- not only were we hiring um, uh, SAG actors, but um, under a totally different agreement. There was yeah. no interactive yep. agreement. Yeah. I want to say it was the new media or something like that um, agreement. Um, but I also got introduced to some phenomenal directors mm-hmm. um, like Gordon Hunt and mm. Chris Zimmerman and Colette yeah. Sunderman. Um, so I sort of shadowed them a little bit and then um, basically left Sound Deluxe to have my babies. I have twin girls. You're Aww. kidding. Yes. Oh, that's so well, cute. I have more than them. I have twin 14-year-olds and a six-year-old little boy. Wow. wow. But yeah, when I had the twins, I knew I couldn't go back to producing. It was just too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had really admired uh, and, and, and really wanted to do what, and particularly Chris was doing. Chris Zimmerman and I mm-hmm. have become right. really close. Mm-hmm. So um, about a year into being a mommy, I wanted to go back and I called Chris and asked if she needed any help and if she would mentor me. Mm-hmm. And thank the living Jesus, she said yes. Yeah. Because uh, she should she could have said no. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and that was like worst case scenario, right? Completely. I was like in my backyard in Pasadena <laughs> pacing, going, no, oh, no, what is she gonna say? <laughs> oh well, if she says no, she says no. And we'll go about it a different yeah. way. Yeah. And um Who could say no to you, Amanda? Well, <laughs> she could say no. Yeah. She could have, but she's awesome like she that. Is. And she did she is. And um and I think I just hit her at a time in her career where she actually could use a little bit of help. I don't know, I mm-hmm. might be I might be um misspeaking mis- there, but I, I, I feel like she um, was really doing a lot then. So I helped her cast, and then I got to sit in and watch her direct mm-hmm. and watch Gordon direct awesome. as well. Wow. Um, so I sort of came up through that. And mm-hmm. then when they thought I was ready, I got my own projects and beautiful do you remember your very first solo it was called streetwise um and i do remember it i i I think i we split credits or something on that because i remember the day that gordon was in with in the booth with me and i i I had it it was still in a kind of shadowing you know kind of effort and someone walked in the booth to uh you know, start this role. And he said, you know, why don't you take this? And I, I, okay. So I sat down and I I started directing and then he um, looked at me and he put his hand on my knee and he's like, okay, so I'm gonna go. And I was like, where? Where Where are you going? Are you going to to get a snack? Where are you going? And he said, no, you're ready. Oh, that's great. So he left and then I I just went from there. Isn't that beautiful? It was awesome. So after that, were you just like, I got this, man? No. No? (laughs) No. (laughs) I still second guess myself. I've been doing this for 13 years and I still go, I, you know, I, no secret, I have, watched the Roger Craig Smith episode and he talked a lot about this about yeah. sometimes feeling like Ooh, when are they going to catch on right. I don't know what I'm doing right. yeah. yeah I go through that all the time all the time um and 
it, it's it was it was interesting to hear his his point of view mm-hmm. on it from an actor's side. Yeah, and then the um, how closely I related to that. Yeah, um, to his story on the director's side. Of right, but I think there having that bit of like courage and fear bumped yeah, against each other is a great way to keep a sense of humility yeah. and gratitude because otherwise it's kind of like, eh. uh, and I, I think you this. lose yeah. your, you know, that, because I always say like nervousness is just a different flavor of excitement, yeah. you know? And yeah. so it's just a matter of channeling it right. in a way that isn't paralyzing you. Exactly. You know? Well, and it also forces you to always put your energy into it, right? Yep. Like I'm yeah. 110% or, or, or why? Do yeah. It, yeah. Right. And so, um, if you felt like, oh, I got this, you might not put that that percentage in. Yeah. You know. Um, so, yeah. Is there a reason why video games are so popular? I, I, I mean, is it just because kids like to play them, or is there a deeper reason that that people seem to like just gravitate towards playing these video games? Oh gosh. I mean. I would say first and foremost, they're so much fun to play, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so immersive now. Completely, I mean, the graphics it's like you're in a real. Oh, yeah. The way they've this, evolved. Yeah, insane. the graphics are insane. The mm-hmm. stories are so well written. Um, you know, I mean, they are big budget motion pictures. Yeah. yeah. That are twelve hours of gameplay, so you can really, really lose yourself in these games. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why they have yeah. such a draw. Yeah. And not only that, we're really kind of seeing um, more and more titles that that are um, released in an episodic nature, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. where there is an actual story arc to follow yeah. um, over, you know, what can be a year and a half to two years of production. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think on one hand you're getting that those those you know hardcore kind of um, first person shooter uh, yeah. fans, yep. and then there's also a whole you know another genre of people Completely. that are actually there's something there to satisfy their palate. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. How many how many hours a week do you spend playing video games? I don't. Oh my god. Because <laughs> geez, that was a trick question. Number one, I couldn't. Because if you said ten, I'd be like, you are lying. Yeah. Um, I couldn't. I mean, honest to God, I watch a lot of what I do. Yeah. Um, just simply to see how did it turn out. Of you course. Know? Um, yeah. Because we're doing voiceover, as I said, in this taupe room, and I never get to see the end product mm-hmm. until it actually comes out. I don't get to see what the pacing ended up like. Did the pacing of that scene um, end up how I intended it to end up, or did the, it get slow down? Yeah. yeah. tweaked a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am very interested in the projects once they've come out. And so I'll, you know, thankfully, because of the YouTubes, which you yes. guys are familiar with, yes. I uh, can go on and, and see as much yeah. or as exactly. little of the project as I can. Right, like this, yeah. easy. Yeah. Very Plus, cool. if I tried to play it, I don't know if you guys play, but I'm terrible. I'm pretty And so terrible. my guy would be, like, stuck in that corner, like, going <laughs> around. Now give me a Tetris game. I can't even make like, him turn around. Backing up. I'm like, like an Olympian. Turn turn around. Around. Yeah. I'm like an Olympian when it comes to Tetris. You are, but yeah. The other ones I'm challenged. Yeah. So what are some of the challenges and some of the highlights of directing or casting, whichever or both that you'd want to share? Hmm. Um, I would say some of the challenges in regards to directing uh, would be, you know, having that confidence we were talking about. Mm-hmm to know that there is another game coming around the corner. We aren't represented like actors are. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might not know that, but we have no representation. So we... um, There's an agent out there right now going, hmm. Get her on the phone. (laughs) I think I've just found my calling. There should be. I mean, because you guys have to hustle. We hustle. Absolutely. And I don't think people realize that a lot of, you know, because the actors, you know, we like to make it about us all the time. Um, But it's like, you're you're doing your diligence to get. It's not like they just go, oh, and you're just going through your scroll of yeah. projects yeah. every day. Yeah, we hustle, and we're more than hustling. At least in my stage of, of where my career is, it is um, making sure that I'm able to satisfy all my current clients. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's getting that phone call and 
making that offer for that next project work. Mm -hmm. Because if you say no, the project's not going to not be recorded. Oh, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen with a with director that, that they didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, And then that director may get the next one. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And so this isn't a problem, you know, um, inclusive to myself. This is, right. you know, the 10 or so yeah. of us that right. work regularly in the so, field. So then part of the objective is when you're working on a project is that you want to, like, get this thing done. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, yep. We need to get it done. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, you know not we're juggling several yeah. games at one one point in time. So you want to make sure that all every client feels as special as the mm -hmm. next client, and they're getting um, you know as much attention as as the other. Exactly. So um, that's kind of tricky. Yeah. Um, I would say one of the things that I think is 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 not understood by the acting community is that. Casting directors in video games ultimately don't make the final decision, mm. right? Um, it's it's a little bit different. Oh no, your in muffin that, basket's going to stop. I they just know. can't order muffin order. Suddenly, not getting gifts at the Forget door. Forget it. She's no, not getting muffins. Uh, but but it's interesting. I mean, uh, it, not only are we kind of the one industry that ha that couples casting and directing mm -hmm. um, together, as mm -hmm. opposed to there's a casting director and there's a director. Uh, you know, at, more and more recently, we've been seeing a separation of mm -hmm. that, and I think it's good. Um, but basically, when we're casting a project, we'll get those hundreds of auditions that we were talking about. We'll narrow them down to seven or ten a names, and then those um, those auditions go off to the client, and the client has the final say. Mm -hmm. They know the game at that point so much more intimately than we do. Yeah. But I actually, I don't mind giving my referrals to my top three um, and or talking about like, oh, you want Stacy? Okay, well, here's the strong points about Stacey. Um, because I've worked with You're working her. with Stacey now? <laughs> this, this is I amazing. Wish, I wish. The zombie um, farmer game. The zombie farmer eight. I'm the, you I'm the zombie farmer wife four. <laughs> four through eight. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but yeah, we don't have the, the ultimate, you know, we're not the final decision yeah. maker. Yeah. So it's interesting. Sometimes the final decision will come back, and I'll 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 be like, oh. Do they ever come back to you and yeah. say, so Amanda, we're really thinking here, but what do you do? You ever come back for your opinion on yes. which way to go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do. Um, and a lot of that is based on previous experience. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if yeah. they've picked someone that they feel uh, might be perfect for the role, but I know is fairly green especially in the video game genre, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's a pretty sizable role. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that person can't do it, but if their second take is someone like yeah. uh, Laura Bailey, who, mm -hmm. you know, can just knock this out of the park, right. yeah. uh, then, you know, I might go to bat for that person. Yeah. By the time yeah. you get it, mm -hmm. you get the game and you get the casting sheet of, you know, what they need and all that stuff, do they already have the story done? Like they know exactly how many characters are needed and all that stuff, or no. they come up as they go? Yeah, I mean, I th I think, you know, there's a obviously there's a rough idea. Yeah. But uh, no, it's in constant development. I mean, we can be in voiceover recording on a game for over two years. Wow. So they're still developing. Uh, there's a ton of changes that are made yep. over the course of that two years. Um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say the other biggest hurdle when it comes to directing is, and this is also a, an unknown, is that we are, as directors, are not a privy to a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Um, because number one, like you just said, it's still in development. Mm -hmm. Number two, there's this kind of need to keep things internal mm -hmm. and, and we are looked at as an external source as well. Yeah. So it's kind of, sometimes the information is divvied out on a need to know basis. Yeah. So you'll often be sitting down to a voice director who, um, received the script the night before. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're sort of you know, go and feel it as we go yeah. and feeling yeah. it with you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's changing. And I think a lot of us are, are really um, voicing our concern with that approach. Mm -hmm. 
And I have seen a change in developers mm -hmm. to want to send us the materials, yeah. um, you know, a week out well, at least. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. So you can really look at it give and, the fullness. Yeah, of, well, yeah. Give exactly. Them, yeah, it's everyone. Well, and benefit. I have you guys looking at me, looking for information, and I'm going, um, okay. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Your guess is as good as mine. This is number one. Oh my gosh, that would be a great spec, right? <laughs> yeah. Your guess is as good as Here's ours. Mine, right? Right? Wing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, when Roger Craig Smith was here, he sang all of your praises um, yeah. when you guys worked together on Batman Arkham Origins. Mm -hmm. um, and Assassin's Creed too. Yes. He's amazing. Um, and. You know, he, we were laughing because we were making him so uncomfortable because every time we complimented him, he's like, oh, God, oh. mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So hopefully your reaction won't be quite the same. But but what, so having especially limited information sometimes, mm -hmm. what do you think makes you an effective director? I think that because I wore this hat for so long, that hat of a producer, Mm -hmm. Protosorial hat. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of protosorial aspect to voiceover directing for video games. A lot of times people don't know that we're the timekeeper in the booth. We uh, have signed up to do a certain amount of lines for the client. Um, and it really does boil down to that. Yeah. And because I've got that sort of protosorial aspect of myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm very cognizant of of that timing, mm -hmm. and I think ultimately that you know <laughs> money talks and that pleases yeah. the client. Yeah. Not only that, it, in addition to that, I um, and maybe this is good or bad, but I have become friends with a lot of the actors. I try to make it a really safe space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I try to make them feel as comfortable as possible. Um, you know, sometimes we've gotten to, you know, we get to know our actors and we know whether or not we need to build in a half an hour into that schedule mm -hmm. because uh, he likes to talk. And if you, if you don't give him that room to talk. <laughs> Who does that? He doesn't. Um, <laughs> he does. She's not gonna Hashtag say anything. Chuck Duran. Uh, no, <laughs> Hashtag. Good. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Yes. Um, but uh, if you don't build in that creative space, yeah. the performance yeah. then is is can feel stifled. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so it is knowing those actors. It's yeah. the relationships that I've formed with the actors yeah. that I think makes me a good director as well. Yeah. I think they trust me. They trust um, that the shorthand I'm giving them is going to work, Yeah, you know? Um, so, I, yeah, I'd say those yeah. two things. I think that is all truthful Basically, information. she really knows what she's, she's doing. Yeah. That's why. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, hey, I have a question for you. Um, what do you wish or would hope for um, that actors would do more to make your life easier come record time? Or just in general. Truthful? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, no, because think about it. Like, if there are little things that you wish they would do yes. or not do, this helps them, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Whether they're working with you or another casting director, are there things that you would appreciate? Let us help you. Yeah, no, yeah. this is... This I'm is... going to say it. Do Good. it. And we're not going to cut it out. Okay. Cameras Wear rolling. deodorant. Okay. No. no deodorants. <laughs> <laughs> makes a choice. Um, put your phones down. Put yes. your phones put down. Put your phones down. I yes. love you more yeah. than I did put before. People down. are working yes. and they're doing this. It happens. Yes. Wow. Yeah. It does, and it's it really I annoying. I can't even imagine that. Yeah, it's it happens, annoying. and it's it's very distracting. I think it, no matter uh, how great you are, it takes you out of the moment. Absolutely. I may be giving direction that you just missed because you were answering a, a, a text or responding to a tweet or yeah. something like that. So I wish just actors would say and yes. you and, and, yes. and you never say something that. like, phones go in this bag right here. I've or, never, you know, no, and, and I actually have gotten upset with myself from time to time about that going, why did I mm -hmm. let that railroad me? It should yeah. yeah. I actually should have said, yeah. you need to put the phone down mm -hmm. because 
I don't feel like we're connecting. Totally. You know? Absolutely. Um, so I'm not saying it's an everyday occurrence. No, of course not. And 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 to be quite fair, there is on our side of the glass a lot of talking. Yeah. So it seems it may seem that there's time. Like, that's like oh, there's not. time. I yeah. can yeah. do this. And I get that. And that's actually okay. You yeah. know, when when we've clearly said like, well, we're gonna choose lunch. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You got about <laughs> twenty minutes. minutes. Answer yes. your tweets. So yes. then go ahead. You know. Yes. But if we're in between a line and you're doing this, uh, I I'm with it, you. It is yeah. So my that's, biggest... that kind of irks you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pet good. Peeve. Yes. That's good. The pet peeve, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yes. Capital letters. Yes. Yep. It's disrespectful Love it. to yeah. Yeah. the process, I mean, would the you, project. Yeah, listen, yeah. if we were all CEOs at a bank yeah. and we're sitting around, you know, the big mahogany table, would you really be like this? Yeah. While mm-hmm. you're, you know, Going. I'm not saying I'm the CEO, <laughs> yeah. but you know what? I could have the CEO of the company and it's very likely yes. sitting behind me. So it actually is disrespectful to just everyone. In it the is. Room. So yeah. here's a question for you. Yes. Um, an actor, I love that. And an I actor, said it. <laughs> I said it. I support you. you. I'm like, proud you of you. This I'm is very, say. very good. We fully uh, we're going to like re- loop that section yes. over and yep. over again and yep. cut it out. Just put that on YouTube. Oh, and stuff. Um, but so, you know, so you're an actor. Mm-hmm. I'm an actor. I, I auditioned for this part in a video game. I don't know what the game is yet. You're the casting director. Yeah. Um, good luck, Chuck. Right? Good luck. I, I send the audition in. I get called in. Yeah. You call me in. Mm-hmm. What can I do to impress you at that audition, at that call call back, call in? Um, you know, be very present in the moment. Leave like the phone out. About. I got no, that one. Got it. Leave the phone Leave the out. Leave the phone outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, set yourself up. Make those choices. Ask any question that you've got. There are no wrong yeah. or dumb so questions. So you're there to help me. Absolutely. Not, yeah, you're on absolutely. the same side. I mean, you've made a callback. Exactly. Right? So something, you know, some little light bulb went off at somewhere down the line that went, he could be right for this role. Good. Let's call him in. Let's see how he takes some direction. Mm-hmm. Go with any sort of weird direction we may give you because you could have like nailed the role yet I don't know you from Adam. Exactly. And so then I say, you know what? Let's See, pretend do. that you're doing this instead. It totally takes you off the page, totally in a different direction. Right. But really, it's just a test to see, could you take my direction? Because at this see. point, yeah. you got the role. It's yeah. whether or not you and I uh, can speak to one another. Can communicate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So I love that. Yeah. yeah. So basically, relax. Relax. Ask a lot mm-hmm. of questions. Ask talk. Ask questions. Don't yeah. be afraid. Yep. Yes. Explore. You're there, you're there Don't for be the afraid. reason. I do you're not right. bite. Yeah. No. I love it. Well, that concludes part one with the awesome Amanda Wyatt. Stick around next week for part two. Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow all of us on social. And just remember, you you always have have time time for for a little little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.